Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Hey, this is your host, Matt Breckwald, and thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Well, today I get to profile another FFA student with a business that I refer to as a millionaire maker, and I really mean it when I say that, and that is lawn and landscaping business. Man, I the FFA is turning so many kids into very successful business owners uh, when they get started in these lawn businesses. And today I get to speak with Matt Rowlett. He's coming to us from Kentucky, and he is the 2019 State Star winner for the state of Kentucky, and he's got his own lawn care business. Already has one employee. They're doing 54 lawns per week, and he's got a goal of expanding his services and getting up to 100 lawns per week and running two crews. And right now he is studying at Eastern Kentucky University, studying agribusiness with an emphasis in lawn and turf management to prepare him to reach those goals. Really interesting. Love these interviews. Love this business. And I think you're going to really enjoy it as well. Let's get it started right now. Joining me today is Matt Roulette, and he is coming to us from Kentucky, uh, actually from just driving away from his farm, and he is now attending Eastern Kentucky University, where he is studying agribusiness as well, well, with an emphasis in lawn and turf management, and he is the 2019 Kentucky State Star winner in agribusiness. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for calling me. Hey, you bet. I appreciate you taking the time today. I know it's a busy, busy time of year. You're in school and and you're you've got your farm to tend to and your business and everything else. So I appreciate you squeezing me in. No problem. All right. Well, uh, so here we are. You're done with your school day. It's Wednesday before Thanksgiving break. Do you get a full week off next week? No, we just get partial week. Just uh, a we partial week. Tuesday. That's old school. Yeah. E- Eastern Kentucky does it old school. Yep. <laughs> I like it. The emphasis is on education. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh I I'd like to start off just by introducing you, just kind of asking you a few questions about you so our audience can get to know who they're listening to. Would that be all right with you? That'd be fine. All right. Well, how old are you now, Matt? I'm 19 years old. Okay. Now, we already know that when you're not at school, you're at home on a farm. Tell me about about your family's farm. Um, it's about 55 acres that originally belonged to my great grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, it sits at the foot of a, a local known hiking trail called the Pinnacles. Um, okay. It's uh, a pretty good little property for just me to take care of. Um, I, on top of my school and my business, I also do um, a hay business there. I sell throughout the winter to local farmers, and I also have a small cow calf operation going on um, where I raise Angus calves. Oh, okay, man. It sounds like heaven. Kentucky's beautiful, and you're at the base yeah. of a mountain on a on a farm. Sounds awesome. It's a beautiful side. <laughs> it's a beautiful side. It really is. So you're taking care of the whole place yourself. Uh, your your folks are not involved in it, or or how does that all pan out? No, no. My dad, my dad has been in poor health recently. Okay. Um, he actually had uh, two heart attacks in the past year, and um, so he's not really able to do much. Um, but we made a deal with my great uncle. Um, who was in charge of the property originally and he told me as long as i took care of the property and cleaned it up because it was in a pretty bad state at that time Uh as long as i cleaned it up and took care of it i could use it for what anything i wanted to so okay um i've done that and i've i've enjoyed every minute of it well that was great when did you start when did this all begin um probably about going on five years ago i guess okay Um, it it slowly each year has gotten you know more more intense um i've slowly bought my own used equipment and things just Mm -hmm. to kind of be able to cut my own hay and bell my own hay and and whatnot so okay very good and uh so when did you start raising cattle was that right away or has that been more recent um that was probably going on three years ago i guess okay um i bought some fungus heifers off my uncle who also has a cattle operation okay and um they they've been kind of my my starting curve there and uh, recently both had calves and so they're all doing good. And, uh, now we have a bull, so we're, we're doing even better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you're building that herd as we speak. Trying to, yes, sir. Very good. And now that land, that 55 acres, when you took it over, were those hay fields, were they still hay fields or did you have to clear out trees that were kind of coming back in and things like that? No, they, they weren't grown up to that extent yet. Um, a lot of it was broom sage. 
uh, we had to go through and put a heavy amount of lime and fertilizer on there and try to kill out the broom sage best I could. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really, really helped a lot. Um, the buildings and things, whatnot had just grown up with the grasses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, just needed a lot of maintenance, a lot of boards and things that needed replaced. A lot of fences need to be cleaned and whatnot. It it was just a, a big a big project to get in at that young of age, but I enjoyed every second of it. Well, good. At that time, my father was able to help me some, so it kind of yeah. kind of helped get me started. Well, I'm sorry to hear he's had those two heart attacks. Is uh, are things looking better now? Is he is he recovering? Yeah, he's doing better. He still has some rough days, but he's he's doing pretty good. Okay. All right. Well, how long have you been involved with the FFA? Um, I joined my freshman year of high school. And and what brought you in? What made you want to join? Well, uh, my family all raised cattle throughout my young age. I mean, I grew up on my my great I'm sorry, my grandfather's farm. So my mm-hmm. dad's stuff, dad. Um, he just pulled me in at a young age and basically showed me the ropes and whatnot. And I've always enjoyed driving equipment and operating things and uh, turning wrenches and seeing how everything works. So that really uh, struck a passion with me and mm-hmm. um, really got me into it. Okay, very good. And FFA was a logical step to uh, to carry that on and learn more about it, it sounds like. Yeah, I, I enjoyed having the, the little time at school there that, you know, you took three or four classes in the ag department and you got to learn more about the career that you wanted to go into or more of a career type base instead mm-hmm. of just the normal education classes that you have to required to take. Got it. So you like to learn stuff that if you wanted to, you could, you could go out from school that day and apply it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Good for you. Very good. Well, obviously it's been working out. Tell me about uh, becoming the state star in agribusiness. How did that all, how did it all, all come about? Well, um, about four years ago, like I said, I joined FSA and um, my SAE uh, career plan, I guess you'd say, um, become a lawn business. Mm -hmm. And I started mowing yards for my neighbors and elderly people that lived around, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of just striked into a bigger business more than I ever dreamed of it being. Um, It went from a push mower my dad gave me to uh, right now I'm mowing 54 yards a week. Wow. Uh, me and one employee, and um, that's about all we can do just to mow the yards. And mm-hmm. we've also got uh, contracts with uh, people to redo their landscaping. Um, we do anything from new to renovations. Um, we do a lot of uh, snow removal throughout the winter whenever it does snow around here. Um, we also do uh, aeration, seeding, and uh, fertilization just to help people, you know, uh, get their yard back into shape in the spring. So. Very good. So is snow removal, is that the extent of the work that you have over the winter or do you still have, do you still have other yard? That's, that's a, no, that's about it. Uh, snow removal is pretty much all we do throughout okay. the winter. Um, in the fall months, we'll uh, do what we call leaf cleanups. Uh, we just go through and we'll clean out your fire beds, pull mm-hmm. the weeds, trim some bushes. And then I actually bought a vacuum system that sucks up leaves from the curbside. Um, it's a big trailer. Okay. But I uh, recently bought that in the past couple of years and grew my business in that direction just to create a little more income throughout the fall months. Great. Very good. So when did you begin the, the lawn business? Uh, well, it was really um, about 2000. I'm not sure. It was my freshman year. I guess okay. it was 2014 or 2015, okay. somewhere in there. Uh, so, but I think, go ahead. Well, so it was your freshman year, so this is before you had a driver's license then? Yeah, my, my father helped, like I said, at that time, he okay. was still in um, decent health. He helped uh, haul me around from job to job throughout the evenings after school and on the weekends. Okay. So that's how it kind of started out there. Got it. Very good. So you got it going, and then how long was it until you hired your employee? Um, that was shortly after I got my driver's license. My okay. dad kind of stepped away at that time and no longer helped. And um, I really needed some extra help on weed eating and things. And Mm -hmm. it just took too much time to do one yard by myself. Okay. Very good. So you hired an employee. um, You've been buying equipment. And then you're finding other equipment you can buy that allows you to offer more services to your same customers and and pick up even extra revenue. 
Correct. Yeah. Very good. That is great. And so you've grown it up. What is the name of your business? Uh, Rallet's Lawn Care. Oh, Rallet's Lawn Care. Perfect. And so how have you spread the word? How have people found out that you're out there and, and they can call you to take care of their lawn? Well, that's the best part about uh, my community and my business, really. Um, I grew up in a small town where, you know, everybody knows everybody. It's, mm-hmm. it's that small. Um, really, my business, my work, I uh, use to a, a certain extent of quality. Like, I demand to do something. If, if I was going to do something for you, I want it to be something I would be pleased with at my own home. Mm-hmm. And so I go out here and I do a good job on somebody's yard. And they'll go tell their brother or their sister mm-hmm. or their mother or their next door neighbor. And the word of mouth is my biggest seller. Um, I've slightly used Facebook here and there to kind mm-hmm. of promote some of our business, um, just to move into the near close cities um, that are near me, mm-hmm. uh, just to expand a little further um, to people that, that don't know me by chance. Um, but other than other than that, I really don't do any promotions. It's just kind of word of mouth and people okay. seeing me out doing what I do. And you said that at this point you're doing 54 lawns a week? Yes, sir. Wow. And so are some of those the same customer? You're just doing their lawns every week or every other week or something like that? Yeah, we have weekly contracts with the um, majority of our customers and some are biweekly. Okay. Um, so that just kind of, kind of varies just between the, the customer's preference and the ability to get everything done, really. So it averages out to 54 lawns per week, and and yep. so obviously, if on a four week month, that's a that's well over 200 lawns that month. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. You are you are working. You're going hard. Yeah, sure. Well, good I'm for you. I'm trying my best. I'd, <laughs> I'd love in the future to have 100 yards, and I'd love to have two crews mowing them. I no, just, uh, absolutely. Right now, until I get out of college, that's not not a question. <laughs> yeah, well, good not for you. Day and not enough daylight. That's excellent. Well, let's do this. I, I'd love to acknowledge your FFA advisors that have helped you along the way. Who have those folks been for you? Um, Anderson, I'm sorry, Kevin Anderson, uh, Jenna Klein, and Brent Muncy. All right, very good. And, man, I'm going to take a second to acknowledge one of my sponsors and everybody. I am talking all about Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment. Obviously, they've been a great sponsor of this show for a couple years now, and they make fantastic equipment for handling your large livestock. If you've got cattle like Matt does, well then, eventually, you're going to need to run them into a squeeze chute, and you're going to need panels and a runway and all of that. And Powder River has developed the best, the most stress-reducing equipment that is out there. Please go on over to PowderRiver.com, check out what they've got to offer, and let them know that Matt Breckwald from the Off Farm Income Podcast sent you to them. All right, Matt. Matt, I'm assuming, do you have that cattle handling equipment already? You probably had it already there on the farm, I bet. Uh, yeah, I've got some stuff that was handed me down from uh, relatives and uh-huh. not, um, but I do, do use a lot of equipment. Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. Well, very cool. So you are majoring now in agribusiness and lawn and turf emphasis. So it sounds to me like you have a, a strong interest in continuing to grow and build this business. Yeah, I would love to love to eventually be able to do it completely full time, you know, and uh-huh. after I get out of school, um, like I said, I'd like to have near 100 yards Yeah, um, just to kind of kind of keep me busy, you know. Yeah. Well, that would definitely do it. So what are you learning in college that's going to help you uh, accomplish your goals with your business? Um, Right now, I have a plant science class that's really teaching me a lot about uh, different plants, uh, different species. Um, It just really breaks it down into the smaller details that we don't see eye Mm -hmm. to eye, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next semester, I'll be taking a pest management class and hopefully be able to get my pests license in the future to uh, move the business in that direction a little bit further um, so we can handle chemicals. Very good. So in a, you've got several goals then. I mean, you want to get up to 100 yards, you want to get a couple crews going, but you also want to expand the services you can offer even further. Oh, yeah. Very good. I'd, I'd love to make my business even more competitive with the local local businesses very good and that's a that's an interesting question do you have a lot of of competition in your area for this type of business um really and truly they're not competition i mean yeah we compete to get different jobs but Mm -hmm. they're really a lot of friends and family okay Um, as small as our community is you get to know each other one another 
uh, pretty quick when you see each other 10 times a day on the road, you know? Sure. Um, but, but there, there's quite a few people here in my town. Um, you can't go through Berea without passing somebody pulling a lawnmower during the summer. <laughs> okay. It's just impossible. Um, but yeah. And what's the, you know, for a business like what you have, what is the biggest logistical challenge? And I guess what I'm asking is, is it being able to handle all the customers in a timely manner? Is it is it getting rid of the yard waste that you collect throughout the day? Those type of things. Is it the mechanics on the machinery? What what causes you your biggest challenge, I guess? Uh, not really for sure. I, I'm pretty lucky with my mechanic skills. My grandfather was a mechanic for a long mm-hmm. time, and uh, I've kind of kind of learned a lot throughout the years. Uh, my waste, I, I'm actually got a property there at the farm that I dump on and we burn the pile a couple times a year just to remove stuff. Okay. Um, so really I don't have a whole lot of trouble there. Um, and getting business done throughout the week's not as hard as you actually seem. We were mowing, I think those 54 yards in like four days a week full okay. time. I mean, throughout the summer, me and my employee. So it didn't, it didn't really have a hard time. Um, really and truly, I guess my biggest, problem or my biggest pet peeve or whatever you call it uh it's just to grow the business even more i mean mm-hmm. um i've competed with a lot of bigger companies throughout our county and um i've been burned on a couple deals that probably would have made me a lot more business mm-hmm. on these bigger properties uh but i think it's a god thing back behind all of it all he uh he, he did it for a reason and he knew that I couldn't handle it throughout the, the college experience. So um maybe sure. someday he's done line I'll get to get to do those. Yeah, it's kinda hard to see potential growth for your business but hold yourself back because you're not ready, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well this is very cool, Matt, and uh you must like working for yourself and being an entrepreneur. I love it. I you know, I, I've had a couple jobs here and there working for a couple of people, just small stuff. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't hate it, but I enjoy being my own boss and having my own schedule. It's, yeah. it's the best job you can have. So. Well, let's let's talk about the farming side again. So is that is that just a hobby for you or is that something you'd like to grow and continue to do as, as another source of income for yourself going forward? Um, I enjoy the farming. It's fun. There's not a whole lot of money in it, to be honest. After you count all your time and everything, expenses, mm-hmm. um, I guess you'd say it's more of a hobby right now. Eventually, uh, I'd like to grow my cattle operation bigger and, you know, uh, use that as more of a winter income as, as I do the hay. So, okay. um, really and truly, it's just a, another business adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed hearing about it. I'd love to get your advice for another FFA student out there somewhere across the United States if... If they're considering starting a lawn care business, they're going to go out and start at their freshman year like you did. How should they get started? What piece of advice would you have for them to go and get started? I would say just to buy the best equipment that you can afford at the time. When I started out, uh, I just had a push mower and a little rinky-dink weed ear. And uh, now I've got uh, a brand new lawnmower and two used lawnmowers, um, several handheld equipment. I mean, you, you can't always start at the top. you got to work your way sure. up. And I've learned that's the hard thing. Um, <laughs> okay. It's, it's tough. Well, very good. That is really good advice, Matt. So start with used equipment and kind of save that money and, and, and work your way up to getting that nice, shiny stuff. That's right, yeah. Very good. Well, hey, this has been fun. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this advice with us today. No problem at all. Thank you for giving me a call. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you for listening to Matt's story. Always love profiling that business. It is a very exciting thing to hear what he is doing and just to picture and know what he's got coming in his future. Really, really cool stuff. As always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.